Okay, I've got this picture, okay? Um, first of all, if this is a curve, y equals f of x. Okay, where f of x could be any combination of power functions and exponentials and sines and cosines and other functions you've never heard of, okay? And many that you have, okay? Uh, then, just a little notation. Total error is what you call the integral of f of x with respect to x. Okay? On the interval a, b. This is a and this is b, right? Okay? Now, Wolfram Alpha will do that. So if I give you the function, you just put the right words in, and it'll tell you what the right words are, and it'll tell you what the area is. Okay? That makes sense? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's kind of handy. Um, denoted by this sign. Now, what are you doing when you do this area? You're doing a sum of all the little areas, right? Mm -hmm. Now, an integral is just a limit of what we do here as the width of your subintervals approaches zero, okay? It's just a limit of what you've done here, but you, know, you, you, you develop that. We're not going to develop that, okay? I'm just telling you, you'll see that when you take calculus. Okay, well, it's denoted by this. Now, this thing is kind of like an elongated S. It's an integral sign. It kind of stands for a sum, okay? Because it's a sum, it can be visualized as a sum of areas, okay? And that's how we get it, okay? So, for example, basic area, the area under the basic graph of f of x equals 2 to the x which you know how to sketch, and you can guarantee that you'll have to sketch some of these on the exam and, you know, do the tables, no calculator, okay? Uh, area under this thing is just the integral from negative 2 to 2. When I say the basic graph, it goes from negative 2 to 2, right? Of dx. Okay? And all you've got to do to find that area using Wolfram Alpha is write the word integral and then probably some parentheses. I haven't even looked it up. You can find it. Okay? But I'll find it for you and give you some instructions this afternoon. Okay? And then you just put in 2 raised to the x and then specify that x is the variable. You'd think it would know, but you, you have to tell it that. Because sometimes you have more than one variable and you've got to integrate with just respect to one of them. And you don't have to worry about that, but there's a good reason why they ex insist that you tell it what the variable is. And then the negative 2 and the 2. Okay? That's all the information you've got to give it. 2 to the x. X is your variable. It goes from negative 2 to 2. 
Okay? Then, if you were to do the trapezoid, trapezoidal graph, and this would be a typical thing I'd maybe ask you to do, okay? So here's negative 2 and here's 2. And you do a bunch of trapezoids. And you get your accumulated areas, and I'm going to have trouble putting parentheses in. And I'm not going to put anything else in here because it's the parentheses that matter, although when you do it, you would want to indicate everything, right? And it's going to be pretty close to this if you use a lot of intervals, okay? So, This should be pretty close to what Wolf and Malcolm tells you here. Okay? Now again, you'll learn how to do that in a calculus class. Right now, we're just learning what areas under the curve and slopes mean. Okay? So the only reason I'm even mentioning this is that when you do calculus, you have an easy way, well, if you use Wolf Mouth, you have a real easy way to get the exact answer. But you've got to learn how to do integrals, okay? First you learn how to do derivatives, because integrals are kind of an inverse relation operation.